So ProBuilder has been acquired by Unity and is now free for everyone to use. ProBuilder is an amazing tool for quickly modeling assets and levels within the Unity editor. And I personally think it's really great for prototyping. You can make some incredibly beautiful things using ProBuilder. Well, I, I can't. But other people can, and there's no doubt it's a really useful tool. So let's jump right into it. Also, special thanks to Patrick McGindy, Diego Geik, Infinity PPR, and Yorai Omar for their support on Patreon. So before we can start using ProBuilder, we need to include it in our project. As of recording this video, the ProBuilder tools aren't part of Unity by default. Instead, we have to go to the Asset Store to download it. I'll of course have a link for this in the description. Once it's downloaded, you should see a ProCore folder in your project. Now we can go to the top under tools, go under pro builder and let's open up the pro builder window. And this is going to open up a new window with a bunch of icons. If we right click on the blank space here, we can choose between icon mode or text mode. This is really just a matter of preference. I often switch between them when I'm looking for a particular setting, but most of the time I spend in icon mode. Now I'm using pro builder together with pro grids to easily snap everything to the grid. And that's also why you're seeing the green grid lines here. It's totally optional, but if you want to set that up as well, I suggest you check out our video on ProGrids. And now we're pretty much ready to get started. So the first tool that I want to show is the Polygon Shape tool. If we click this, we can quickly draw out a shape. I'm simply going to press my mouse button in order to insert some points. And I'll draw out a nice base for our level here. Once you're satisfied, simply close out the shape. And we can then use our mouse to control the height of the extrusion. I think about two units seems fine. We can always go in and adjust afterwards. And once you're happy, hit enter. This completes our shape and it's now an object that we can move around the scene. So that's how you can easily get started with creating objects in ProBuilder. But ProBuilder is also great for modifying objects after the fact. At the very top here, we have four different icons. These are basically our selection modes. Currently, we're in object mode, so we select an entire object at a time. We can also switch to vertex selection. This allows us to select individual vertices. And you'll notice that we can easily move these around using the default Unity Move tool. I'm just gonna undo that. We also have a selection move for edges. These are the lines that connect between vertices, as well as faces. These are the surfaces that fill out our geometry. So in my case here, I'm gonna select the face at the bottom. I'm then gonna switch to the scale tool by hitting R. And if I just go ahead and scale this up, you can see what happens. It kind of stretches out our model. This is fine in some cases, but what I want is to create some extra geometry underneath our current platform. To do that, I hold down shift and then scale, and you can see that we are now creating an extra surface underneath. We then choose the right size for this. I'm then gonna switch to the move tool. And again, I'm gonna hold down shift and move in order to extrude out the surface. I'm gonna make this two units wide as well. Again, I'm gonna switch to the scale tool hold down shift and extrude inwards in order to kind of form a pillar. And don't worry about the glitching here, that's just because the lighting is currently calculating. And finally, I'm gonna switch back to the move tool, hold down shift and move it down in order to extrude out a pillar. So now we kind of have a platform standing on top of a pillar and it's kind of resembling a watchtower. If we wanted, we could easily go in here and add extra detail. For example, we could switch to add selection and in order to quick select the entire ring that goes around our pillar, we can simply double click. And now we could try moving this down a little. I think that looks pretty cool. In order to better see what we're looking at, I'm just gonna take our directional light and just decrease the intensity to something like 0.8. Now, depending on what mode we're currently in and what we have selected, we're going to see different icons in our ProBuilder window. And you might find that these are pretty overwhelming in the beginning. Luckily, they are color coded in order to make it easier to find the setting you're looking for. If we select the top face of our model here, we can use all of the red icons in order to change the geometry. Say we wanted to add a bevel, we'd click the icon right here. And voila, we've now created a bevel all the way around our surface. Right next to the bevel, we have a button that will subdivide the surface. We can also flip the face normal, as well as detach faces. All the tools that are marked with blue have to do with selection. The ones that I use the most here is the ability to grow and shrink your selection. This is the grow selection button and this shrink selection button. Let's switch into object mode. And here we can use all the green buttons to affect our entire object. We could, for example, mirror objects. And notice that this is one of the settings that has a little cog here. 
which means that we can change some options on the setting by simply holding down Alt and clicking. And here we could, for example, change what access we want to mirror on. I'm just gonna delete that. Another handy setting is that we can actually take our model and export it using this button right here. If we hold down Alt, we get to choose what format we want and a bunch of other settings. This is super useful for gray boxing and prototyping a level because you can lay out your level and see if it plays nice. And once you're satisfied, you can take your Pro Builder level and bring it into an actual 3D modeling software. And there you can replace objects and add detail to make it look much better and then simply bring it back into Unity. And finally, the orange color at the top is for all of the editors. This is where we created our new polygon shape. And that's actually another way to create objects, which is really powerful. And that's using the shape generator. It's the first button in the top left. And if we click this, we now get a new window as well as a preview of the object that we're currently generating. I'm just gonna go and move up our preview here so we can actually see it. And this allows us to easily generate a bunch of different shapes. If we go to the shape selector, we can change from cube to prism. There are options for doors, pipes, cones, arches, and one that I use all the time, which is extremely useful, is it has a stair generator. This tool is just amazing. I wanna go ahead and get rid of the curvature, so I'm gonna set that to zero. I'm also going to move it over and move it down a bit. I'm gonna rotate it by about 90 degrees, and so it's nicely centered. I'm gonna leave the width at around two. Let's set the height to two as well. And I think actually the Z will be fine at around two as well. If we wanna adjust the amount of steps, we can simply change that here. I think I'm gonna add in a few more steps here. Once you're satisfied with all of your options, simply hit build. Pro Builder generates the object and it's now like any other that we can see in our scene. If we go and close this window, we can maybe add a tiny bit more geometry to our level. I'm gonna open up the polygon shape tool and I'm just quickly gonna draw something out. I definitely like the look of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another stair for this. I'm gonna select the stair tool. I'm gonna to move up the stair, place it where I want it. And this one I wanna add curvature to. So I'm gonna set the curvature to around 90. I'm gonna rotate it, move it over. Let's change the height to one. And I actually think that looks pretty nice. I'm then gonna hit build stair. And I hope that you're starting to see just how easy it is to quickly create levels with this tool. Now, once we're satisfied with our model, it's of course nice to be able to add some colors and materials to it. To do that, let's open up the material editor. Here we can drag in all the materials that we wanna be able to apply to our models. There's of course the default prototype one, which is the one that's currently applied. I've also created two materials beforehand, a blue material and a red material. And if you wanna create your own, simply right click, go create material. We can call this one green material. And you can pretty much use any settings that you'd like here. ProBuilder also has some shaders that you can use. The default shader simply uses standard vertex color. You can choose a texture. I'm just gonna go with the default grid box here. And we can maybe tint it a green color. And now we can simply drag it into the material editor just like all the others. Then to apply a material to one of our objects, we simply select it. So I'm gonna select the topmost object here. And you can see the shortcuts that are mapped to the different materials right here. So in my case, I'm gonna press Alt 4 in order to apply the green material. And there we go. For the stairs here, I'm gonna add a blue material. And if we only want to add colors to a certain part of an object, well then we simply select the object. We go into face mode. And I'm gonna select all the faces around the edge of this tower here. And then we simply press the material that we want. So I'm gonna select a red material for this one. And there we go. Now I'm just using simple colors to illustrate the concept here, but you can add as much detail as you want to your materials. If you wanna use metallic maps and normal maps and height maps, you can simply use the standard shader. Also, sometimes it's nice to be able to manually edit UVs on an object. Luckily, Pro Builder actually comes with a UV editor as well. Let's select our top object here and hit F to focus on it. We can then open up the UV editor here. This is another window, and here we can actually see the UVs that make up our object. Say we wanted to change the UVs on the top surface here. Well, we can simply move it over, scale it up, and rotate it just as you would in the normal Unity editor. In fact, if you wanted to create a custom texture specifically for this object, we can press the small camera button here in order to render out our UVs 
so that we can paint on top of them in our texturing software. Pretty cool. Oh, and did I mention that right away our object should actually already have colliders? I'm just gonna add a quick rigid body to our scene here. And if I now hit play, we can see that the ball collides with our environment. Yay! That's pretty much it for this video on Pro Builder. I expect a lot of these features and UI to go through some changes now that it's part of the Unity ecosystem, so stay tuned for that. Also, I'm pleased to announce that we now have an official Brachys Discord server. It was created by some awesome guys from the forum, and it's a great place to meet other developers, get feedback on your projects, and just hang out. You can join now by using the link in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Also, it's great to have glasses now because I can do this and people people take me seriously. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in March, and a special thanks to Patrick McGinley, Diego Geik, Infinity PBR, Yorai Omer, Cyborg Mummy, Dark Heemskirk, Nawal, Faisal Marify, Beard or Die, Double Tap 45, G Snyder, James P, G Delay, Superman the Great, John Beauregard, Cole Cabral, Dennis Sullivan, Jason, Plan Z, Alex Rokitsky, Bruins Cat, Bjorn Fudelknab, Svetlin Svidenov, Matthew Knight, Jin, Sasha Hopstein, Gregory Pierce, James Rogers, Robert Bund, Judaman, Rob Fairn, Adrian Haslinger, and Erasmus. You guys rock.